It's my great pleasure to introduce to you my esteemed colleagues from renowned Swiss and international universities. Dominique Arleta is rector at the University of Lausanne since, since 2006. He holds a PhD in mathematics from ETH Zurich and has served in various high-level administrative functions uh, at the University of Lausanne since 19. 96 and has held important positions in the Swiss university governance system in the past decade. Thomas Bieger serves as president of the Universities of St. Gallen since 2011 and is a full professor in business administration with specialization in tourism. He has held a series of important administrative positions at the University of St. Gallen since 2003 and has served as the SEMS president from 2010 to 14. Lino Guzzella has been appointed president of the ETH Zurich in January 2015 and has been a full professor in thermotronics at ETH since 1999. He has obtained industrial research experience with Sulzer and Hilti and has served two terms in important administrative functions at the ETH in Zurich. Sasha Spoon is president of the Lufana University since 2006. It is, as its president, he has initiated the university's realignment and implemented an innovative, multiple awarded program of education. He studied economics and politics in St. Gallen, Munich and Paris, and holds a PhD in economics. I guess nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, start by setting the stage for this important panel, which is the so-called cherry on the pie of our day today. The hope we have all placed in these coming 75 minutes, just to be sure we're all comfortable with expectations, <laughs> is that each of us on stage here will make a meaningful commitment towards furthering the integration of responsibility and sustainability into our universities. Let us remember the key challenges we have highlighted in the past channel, in the past panel, We've looked at faculty as a, at the possibilities within faculty of what needs to happen in terms of adopting weighting criteria and the selection process or making them the change they can be. We looked at the importance of students. We looked at suggestions in education in terms of how we can embed experiential fieldwork. We've looked at a whole series of actions that can take place at the institution itself, uh, from the living lab example to making sure that the plastic cups are done and all the, all the other transformations that need to happen. Um, also to further the discussions and deepen the, the discussion, let me just briefly provide you with some, oops, this is not gonna work like that. Um, what I wanted to do is to share with you a few, let me see if I can repair this, probably not. I wanted to share with you a few enablers that we have placed behind this vision that we have just shared. I'm just going to leave this in the background. Um, it is so that you have some further inspiration in terms of um, these three roles, potential roles of education. I will leave this up here. This serves for you as some inspiration to see what you think uh, needs to uh, needs to happen in terms of uh, university change, given what you have heard. Um, my job is to make sure that you also um, have some interaction going while we are here. So in a little bit of a weird way, we're not allowing our dear presidents to talk just now, but to listen. And you have a few minutes to just talk between you of what you think are important messages that they need to hear. Turn to your neighbor for just a couple of minutes, and we'll debrief after that. Let us hear what you have to say to our dear presidents and directors before they start responding with what they are going on. Um, I'm going to be relatively protective of my dear audience, so please uh, remain short and, um, um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so who has any suggestions? Vanessa. Hi, I'm Vanessa. Um, as a student here at the University of St. Gallen, I can say there's a lot going on uh, with sustainability and responsibility. But what I miss is that th those topics are included in the core studies. So 
at the moment, it works like that, that the professor adds on slides at the end of the lecture saying something about sustainability and responsibility. But I think it actually makes it worse because it communicates, yeah, this topic is not core business. It's something, yeah, we don't really need. And, and professors are role models for the students at some part. So I think it's extremely important that it's integrated in the core studies as well. And that the teachers get time to actually sit down and think about how could we adapt the content? How can we adapt teaching methods? How can we adapt the exams so that we can prepare the students for what's going up, what's going on outside? Thank you very much. Hello, I'm uh, Oscar. I'm a student at ETH Zurich, and uh, I would like to go into that as well. And so we heard there are a lot of changes that need to happen in order to reach a more sustainable and responsible future at the university. And I would just like to say that we would like to be integrated in this process and to help shape our future as well. Not just that it is a topic for the Schulleitung, but also for us. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I like it. We've got the young generation talking now. Yeah, so maybe another student perspective, a bit different from what we've heard so far. My name is Nelly. I'm actually just taking pictures today. Um, <laughs> I'm also a master's student in strategy and international management here at the University of St. Gallen. And I've had actually quite a different experience from. Uh, the, two, uh, the two students we heard before. I have had faculty who are actually very much engaged with sustainability, who share the values, and we have them within our courses. It, it's not at the end of the lecture, it is part of the lecture. We have a course called Exploring Sustainability as a Strategic Opportunity. What I miss, though, is the fact um, we have the ethical perspective, you know, the, the teachers telling us about the morale, how you should be, you should be ethical, you should create the best social impact possible, you should take care of the environment and of people. But the thing is, like the reality, unfortunately, is that is not going to change the mind of someone who wants to be an investment banker and wants to earn a lot of money. So what I think is missing is the focus on how sustainability can help drive businesses, like drive growth, and help businesses be more profitable. And that's something that, if implemented within the courses, will reach not only the people who are ethical and who want to be sustainable, but also the ones who may not see the social benefit, but would still do it for another reason. But then in the end, it's, it's, the, end, it's the goal that matters in the end, not the means. Thank you. One or two more. Um, heard some voices. We were all heard. Because one thing I learned in these things is that you can listen much more if your ears are empty. So I expect you now to have emptied out and you're ready to listen to our esteemed panelists, and I just need a microphone here so I can start this. Sorry to make you run, Lisa. You'll be, you've done your fitness for the day. Thank you. So, Dominic, may I ask you to start with um, the two specific questions that I had asked everybody to prepare, which is, what is the role of universities really to deal with all these big societal and global challenges? And what can you do when you're in university easily? What is more challenging and why? Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. It's very, I'm very happy to have been invited this afternoon for this panel. So, of course, responsibility and sustainability is, uh, are very crucial points, important values for our future. future. We have seen many things this afternoon, so I will not repeat that. And from this point of view, it's clear that universities should play an important role as leader in this subject. So my my vision of what we can do as university uh, is the following. The first one, we must have a clear strategy. You know, today, each university has a strategy. I will say a few words about that in a minute. And a strategy means that we define, the university defines the, the priorities. And within these priorities, we should have sustainability and responsibility. In my university, we have define 10 priorities and one of them is sustainability. Why is, this, why is this important? It's because this strategy is not only a paper you put on your inter internet site, but 
it's a it's a definition of priorities you can really discuss within the community of the university. It is discussed with the politics, and then we can really you can do that because this is your vision. My second point is if you want to have maybe an impact. I say maybe. I hope it's an important impact, but I'm not able to to know exactly what is the impact. But if you want to have an impact, you must have these values really in, in on the governance level, on the governance of the university. And a strategy is useful because, you know, as a, as a rector, as an executive body of a university, you take a lot of decisions. Every week, every day, it takes a lot of decisions. And if you have your strategy in front of you and you can ask for each decision, is this decision coherent with my strategy, then you will really be able to have an impact. I'm sure that from that point of view, it's very important to have this vision on the governance level. For that, you need to have at least one person responsible for that on the governance level. In my university, I have one of the vice rectors is in charge of the sustainability. My third point is that, if you, again, if you really want to to take the university with you, you must have, you must use the participation, you must use the students, you must use the, the, the technical staff, the administrative staff, the, the professors, of course. So it's very important to understand that you cannot do, as a rector, you can do alone any, any step. You must work with the community of the university. The next point I would say it's important to have sustainability as part of the quality concept of your university. And maybe my last point on, from the institutional point of view is that, uh, you know, one very important word today is innovation. We use this word innovation every day for many things and maybe nobody knows exactly what that means. But I, I, from my point of view, innovation is a, is a way to, to view things with new eyes. And I think this, this new spirit should be part of your reflection. Of course, the next point, but I have not time to develop everything, but I will come to the, to the next question. But the next point is education. Education is very important. And to include, and we have seen the students are very clear about that, to include <coughs> sustainability and responsibility within education is very important. You have several ways to do that. Um, uh, we will, in Lausanne, we will open this fall a master on sustainability. So it will really be the core business for these students. Of course, we have other programs, we have courses, we have many things I will not develop now. But let me say two things about education. One, we have a new tool to, since a couple of years, uh, which is called the learning outcomes. Today, we have to, to design education programs in terms of learning outcomes. And I think that this tool can be used to include responsibility, sustainability in education. My second point about education is that I think this is my vision. I don't like to say every single student must have a course in sustainability. I, I, my vision is that every student must be free to take it or not. And maybe at the beginning only a few of the students will be interested in these courses or interested in this new master will open. But I'm sure that after a couple of years, it will, with small steps, we can do big things. Um, now, the question is, what is easy and what is difficult to do? And of course, nothing is easy in a university, that's, that's clear. Um, now, I don't know how to, how to say, of course, the question is, how can we involve people, professors, everybody in the university community? And I don't, I don't have a solution. I don't know the solution. I just say, say that in my university, we have a very special case, because 12 years ago, we created a school on environment and sustainability. We have seven schools in the University of Lausanne. One of them is dedicated to that. And of course, it was not easy to create this school because the main principle of this school is interdisciplinarity. Because we have people in, in, in natural sciences, people in, fi in philosophy, people in social sciences within this school. And to put these people together, it's not always easy. We have some crises, I can tell you. But now it's working very nicely. And it has an impact not only within this school, and you know, we have heard questions about how can we um, 
what was the criteria to hire a new professor or the really A level publication and so on? Of course, in this school, the, fact, the criteria are a little bit different. But this has, has an impact not only on this school, but on the university as a whole. Because we know that this is a topic, this is an important scientific topic, and we can work with this, fac with this school, and we have a lot of collaborations. And I think this is very important. And if I have only 30 more seconds, I, can, I would like to add one remark. Everything I've said depends also on what is the definition of sustainability. And we know that this is very difficult. It's not easy at all to say, because maybe many of, of you maybe think differently. So we have first defined what is for us sustainability. And maybe if you allow me, I will read this definition. It's just our definition. I will read it in French because it's uh, on, the, on the top of our strategy. Par le terme durabilité, l'Université de Lausanne désigne la nécessité pour la société de maintenir une certaine prospérité tout en réduisant drastiquement les impacts sur la biosphère par une meilleure prise en compte des limites des richesses naturelles et du besoin de répartir plus équitablement les ressources. Si les sciences naturelles et les technologies joueront un rôle dans l'apport des solutions innovantes, c'est une évidence qu'elles ne pourront pas seules répondre à ce défi. Seront aussi nécessaires des innovations institutionnelles économique et sociale. Il est de la responsabilité des institutions de formation et de recherche d'analyser en profondeur les mécanismes conduisant au déséquilibre actuel et de contribuer à l'émergence de ces innovations. That's our definition and we are now we agree on that with that definition and we try to work for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Thank you for sharing so openly. It's very interesting. Thomas, I'm handing over to you. Uh, maybe uh, first an introductory remark. If you go back to the uh, roots, to the conceptual roots of sustainability, at the end it's an intergenerative concept. It means the next generation should have more possibilities, more resources, more perspectives than the current one. And I think at the end universities are a role model for sustainable institutions because uh, in universities, young people learn, research is done for new solutions paid by the current generation. So it's a kind of an instrument to enable the next generation. Now, uh, what are we doing uh, at the moment? I think we are doing uh, what every university and business school does. We try to do it better. So we have in our mission statement uh, also the ambition to educate responsible leaders for tomorrow. We uh, do many things on course level, you mentioned it. I think most of our professors today understand that they at least should uh, have draw a link to sustainability matters. That's, that's a progress when you, come, when you look back 10 years ago. Uh, we do a lot of things on program level. Uh, we now have the ambition to introduce in all of our programs a teaching element which is linked to sustainability and uh, responsibility. We do a lot of uh, on institutional level. For example, we uh, have uh, a program, we just introduced a program, the MAC, Master in Unternehmensführung, which has a special link, a special uh, major also in sustainability issues. So I think we, we uh, really try to uh, be on the forefront of what a modern business school does. One thing is important. I think to be a responsible leader means, first of all, you have to be able to reflect your own values. Second, you have to understand the impact of your actions on different environments, not only natural, social, whatever. And third, you have to be able to take actions. And I think at the moment we, we can be very optimistic that we achieve this through our contextual studies. In our university, all the students have to take 25% of their course load in what we call contextual studies. And we have there a column, we have a series of subjects linked to reflection competence. We have all these uh, uh, this, this subjects which help to understand impacts on different um, environments. And what Omid Ashari also mentioned, is that we, uh, we have this uh, action project, these projects we are doing even in uh, other countries. And 
Uh, we have somebody who coordinates this whole process, that's our delegate for sustainability, Thomas Dillig. Now, I think we also did quite a lot when it comes to enabling. We have, I think at St. Gallen, we have the eldest institute for economics and ethics with Thomas Beshorner, who is present here in this room. We have the oldest institute for sustainability and economy and management and sustainability, uh, chaired by Thomas Dillig. And uh, these institutes make quite an impact on, uh, on, on how business is done today. Uh, what, what is a little bit more difficult is uh, how we engage ourselves. And there, I have to admit, there are very severe conflicts in goals. We did a study uh, on our CO2 footprint. And what do you think is the most important source of emissions? travel and that until today uh, emailing uh, Google requests are not calculated yet but I suppose that also when it comes to this we would be not very good sometimes I get the feeling that uh, the highest case rather an airline than, than a university because everybody is flying around on this planet and they have to do it because scientific work today means you have to interact, you have to meet people, you have to, to uh, take part at conferences. And so we should also be honest uh, that we, in, in certain areas, we can replace cups, we can uh, maybe uh, put in new pulps, but at the end there are several things we have to admit that we are not very good at and it would be with a lot of sacrifice uh, then, then we would have to, ch to change it. Then, you, you see, I'm already turning a little bit to the uh, second question. What are the limiting factors? I do not think that it's really on the faculty side. I also think that a modern university can handle the conflicts which lie in the incentive structures. Because what we see now is that we have the first generation of young faculty members in our universities in Switzerland, who have to follow the new career scheme, which means publish or perish. But most faculty won't do this until they retire. So it's, it's in a certain stage on their career track that they have to do this. And what I see is that more and more faculty at the, at the uh, later stage in their developments refocus on teaching and also get new interest in, in topics which have a more integrated manner. My main concern is what uh, one of the students mentioned, the interest of the students itself. Uh, in the same system, we did a survey on the reasons why, on, on, on the motives of students to uh, choose a university. And it's first of all, especially in business universities, it's the reputation and the salary perspectives. That's a fact. And uh, therefore, we really have, and that I think you uh, were absolutely right, uh, we have to show ways how we can combine doing business with sustainability matters, and we have to warn of the dangers when you are doing business without taking into account the responsibility and the sustainability. Uh, we are doing this by focusing very much on what we call impact investment concepts, and uh, I think that that's something we, we uh, uh, should uh, 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 emphasize also in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for sharing the challenges, not just the, everything that you're doing already so well. You know? Thank you. Yeah, I'm very glad to be here and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak about this very important topic and also I'm very grateful to learn that I'm the cherry on the cake. I didn't know that. So. <laughs> How does it feel? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> not so good. <laughs> ETA, you must understand, is not a business school, it's not a full university for those of you who don't know ETA. ETA is an engineering and natural science school, so we are much more limited in our scope than uh, like the University of Lausanne. For Regarding sustainability, where do we see our focus at ATL? There are four things that uh, my people 
Reto Knut, die Tine Brafrich und René Schwarzenbach, die sind die the people who play the major role here at ETA, by the way, in the sustainability arena. So, number one, the main, main impact we can do is we can do fantastic research, we can do fantastic development, we can do fantastic engineering that really brings forward humanity in all the aspects that we are talking about. Reduce energy consumption, reduce pollutant emission, uh, reduce traffic that is needed, wherever we can do a technological engineering contribution, that's our main focus. And I think by that we can really have a huge impact, an immediate, concrete, real impact. Second thing is we educate, like you, Oscar, the future leader in technology, and by imparting to these people not so much the knowledge, that's also important, but also the ability to think, which I believe is much more important for the university. We should not teach so much what to think, but how to think to our students. This is a major contribution, and I tell you, mathematics is a fantastic tool to learn how to think, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, uh, Dominic agrees with that. <laughs> Third point, we try to integrate. Whenever we do decisions, as you told before, Thomas and uh, Dominic, whenever we do decisions on, on our university level, we try to integrate sustainability issues. We cannot completely take economic, environmental, other issues out of the picture, but we try whatever is possible to do. We have to be a role model. I don't remember who, I don't remember who said it, but this is very important. Universities have a role model function. We can afford to do that, we must afford to do that. And fourth, and this is something which is not always easy, we try to engage with society in a dialogue. We don't know the truth, nobody knows the truth. We have some limited information, we have some limited insights in some areas and we try to communicate it with the public. Sometimes I have the impression that the universities are asked too much. They, some politicians, some media people, even the general public, they ask us, what is the truth? Uh, it's a very difficult thing to say what truth is. But we can maybe get some estimation. If this happens, then that can be a consequence. And that is already very, very important. Uh, if I go to the second point, what can uh, we easily adopt and what can we, what is not so easy to adopt? Nothing is easy, believe me. Uh, you said it, uh, in a university, these are tanker that are very difficult to change course, and that's okay, I guess, because changing course too often is also not good. <laughs> What is relatively easy to do? Um, what we do best, research, science, technology, engineering, develop new ideas. It is not easy, but it's relatively speaking the most immediate thing we can do. And in parallel to that, of course, the education part. We can really try to educate the future leaders in engineering and natural sciences. We have pioneering work. I know you said I should not do a sales pitch, but uh, I cannot refrain to do that as well, as my two dear colleagues did so far. I noticed that, don't? It's your job, I know. So, ETA, since 25 years, we have a department on Umweltwissenschaft. Uh -huh. I don't think that many other universities can uh, say that uh, we started that early. We are true pioneers in the engineering side and technology side. Good. What is uh, less easy to adopt? Uh, many things. I mean, we did a lot of progress in really curbing the energy consumption. The data that I have here is that we have now 9 megawatt hours, and that's the check if you understand what that is, huh? 9 megawatt hours. Who understands 9 megawatt hours? <laughs> is this power or energy? <laughs> okay, difficult question. 9 megawatt hours of primary energy consumption per full-time equivalent, 2012, and we were at 12 megawatt hours per full-time equivalent at 2006. That's a substantial contribution, a reduction by a quarter. But that's not easy to achieve. And uh, it will become more and more difficult. You know, it, it, it's the, the law of diminishing returns that you economists, of course, know, know much better than we do. But it was already mentioned, we fly around like hell. And flying, I tell you, is the worst thing that you can do for your CO2 footprint. One time New York forward, backward is one ton of CO2. So if you want to be a two-ton CO2 society, that's one trip to New York and a lot of vegetarian food the rest of the year. <laughs> so there is a conflict of interest here. How do you deal with that? Should we prohibit our faculty, our students, our doctoral students to go to conferences? Can we do that? Should we do that? I don't know. I would save, of course, a lot of money by doing that. 
but probably I would get out of my office as well very soon, which is also an interesting option. By the way. <laughs> what is very difficult to adopt, I told that in the beginning, is this role as an honest broker that we sometimes are forced to adopt or that society puts on top of us. I, when I was younger, I believed that I could do that. The older I get, the more sober my estimation or my, uh, my assessment comes to that. It is really very difficult. It was, I think, the, the famous American uh, philosopher called Yogi Berra who said, all predictions are very difficult, pro in particular those ones who are about the future. And uh, we are no better than Yogi Berra in this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Sasha. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. So I would like to take a student perspective now. Uh, because I was sure with three colleagues here on the panel you would have done best for the university perspective. Just the three comments, imagine something, I will present an idea and I will show you one realization. So imagine 10,000 students or 1,000 faculty members and how many ideas they can have. Who? The students more or the faculty more? You know, there are 10 times more students than faculty members, so they would have 10 times more ideas. And if you are on the same level uh, and working on a vision, this one should be a sophisticated one. But what does this mean to be sophisticated? And I would bring you four aspects in accordance with ethical values, consistent, relevant, and, you know, also it should be stand for something and be very robust. So, how to foster a student's vision at a university? First of all, we have really to engage with students in the academic discourse. We have to do the contrary what the state of Nordrhein-Westfalen did, you know, to forbid that students need to be present at university. <laughs> Second, we should be value-based. This means two aspects. One is reflection, and the other one, and this is very important, this is concerning social systems, this is what I call comprehension, so that we understand where we are part of. And, for sure, you need scientific methods and some practical implications. We call this the method of transdisciplinarity. So, to foster student visions, we have a certain certain requirements, and if we bring them together, we can see that this will bring an idea of education, an idea of responsibility, defined here as students analyze social norms and values and reflect their own values and actions, comprehension, students gain insights into the variety and complexity of cultural and social structures that affect thinking and action, Methods, students gain insights into different scientific methods and projects. Students pursue projects of sustainability solutions in order to learn how to make a vision feasible. And this can be done through an idea of education. You just build a framework out of these fundamental ideas. And you can educate architects. You can also educate scientists as well as businessmen and businesswomen. Thus, a university helps to educate responsible professionals. And I can tell you, as a last point, this idea has been realized at Wolfana since 2007. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. This was very interesting. I think it has, it has certainly enriched my thinking and certainly also surprised me in terms of the honesty and the the value of the, the, in the understanding of how big the challenges actually are. Let me now try to put our discussion in a different uh, perspective. Let's focus on what we can do within Switzerland on, an, on a global scale. So let's look not, no longer within our own universities, but let's see what we together, Switzerland, could do internationally. And here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce an idea called the Swiss Sustainability Hub. Imagine. Imagine if Switzerland was celebrated as the global sustainability hub in the same way as Singapore is celebrated for being Asia's educational hub. What would that mean? A whole bunch of people have worked on this for the last 12 months. 
is a business representative, government, NGO, academics, an economic association. We tried to figure out what would that mean. And I'm bringing actually the voices of them to, of, of all these participants to you to share that vision that we have worked on for a year in a short two minute video. Oh, so this is, this is a small group of us, and then we go crazy. <laughs> this is what we have saying, signed, and the film should come. And I probably just did. Okay. Sustainability can be fussy and confusing. Everything is connected with everything, and everything has become not only important, but also urgent. So many actors have done so much. Yet, the disconnect between our efforts and the state of the world is getting bigger every year. It is now time to bridge the gap from early innovators to mass adoption. Imagine, imagine cutting through the complexity around sustainability to enable action on what really matters in your country, in your sector. The Swiss Sustainability Hub aims to do just that. Imagine a powerful accelerator in the global sustainability journey. First, the positive impact framework providing concrete help for concrete action, a research-based process tool that provides standards to measure, rank, rate and celebrate sustainability progress. Second, a collaborative global space for sharing best practices and new ideas for scaling and overcoming obstacles. The Swiss Sustainability Hub builds on leading Swiss-based global platforms. It positions Switzerland as the effective global hub for sustainability. It collaborates globally and is based on Switzerland's recognized convening and mediating power. Building on Switzerland as a politically neutral state, its high level of expertise, its innovative standards, and its process know-how. Attracting, connecting, and supporting other initiatives that are forming. In short, the Swiss Sustainability Hub is a collaborative space for tipping point change. Change towards a world where we all live well and within the limits of our planet. The Swiss Sustainability Hub could become a transgenerational vision for a country that feels and acts responsible. All right. So what is what we what we have come to the conclusion here is a, a, a comment or a comment that has turned a lot in this morning, which was sustainability and responsibilities are such un happy words. They impose on us an obligation rather than an invitation. So what we have done in this, in this project is to say, actually the vision is to do well and within the limits of the planet. Because that frames the human development perspective and the ecological footprint. So we have kind of gotten um, rid of um, the, uh, the, the sustainability and responsibility words. So my challenge to you would now be, imagine we could realize such a vision and Switzerland could become such a, such a space for the futures ahead of us. What could Swiss universities do to lead such global change? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know, Switzerland is a very small country, so it's difficult to have a big impact. But the Swiss universities are very international, and I think this is maybe the first answer. Of course, the first answer, my first answer would be we have to use our students. And our students are very international. We have people from all over the world, not only the students, but also the young researchers. And our students are very mobile. People getting a master's degree from the University of Lausanne, half of them are mo have been mobile students at some point. So if we really try, we, we achieve to, to, to change a little bit the culture in our universities, probably we can have an impact on the international levels. This seems to be very important. My second answer maybe would be, uh, and this was mentioned early this afternoon, to not only to work within the universities, but to work with other companies, with the society, and this on the internal, in, inside Switzerland or outside Switzerland. This, 
we could we could achieve research projects with people from universities and from the real world. <laughs> Thank you. You're hesitating to grab the microphone. Yeah, it's uh, always a little bit difficult question. Uh, but uh, at the end, I can uh, add to what my colleague Dominique just said. When we look at the different dimensions of sustainability, social, economic, environmental, I do not think that Switzerland can really be a role model in the long run for uh, environmental standard when it comes to nature. Just look back last week when our federal government decided not to tax fuel higher because uh, in Switzerland we have remote areas and it's always easier to adopt high uh, environmental standards when you are a kind of a city-state. So Singapore, I fear, will overtake us most probably when it comes to pure uh, natural environmental standards. But where we can be top is when it comes to social standards. I think it's very hard to find another society which is so inclusive like Switzerland. And I think universities by nature are also role models for inclusiveness. And uh, that's also how we should manage our universities. Uh, to, to serve as an integrating, as a melting pot for societies. Just remember, Switzerland is maybe, with the exception of uh, Germany, one of the only uh, developed countries where the public university system is dominating. You still have free access to universities. That's not the case in many countries. And to the top universities of the world. So I think our, contri our contribution has to be uh, to, to uh, the inclusiveness of society, and as you mentioned it, also to international integration, to, to, to uh, contribute to the international perspective of Switzerland and the international integration. Thank you. Our main amplification factor is research. I cannot as emphasize it enough. I mean, even if Switzerland would become very, very uh, sustainable and we would reduce our CO2 footprint to the maximum, it would have a very small impact on a global scale. We all agree on that, right? But if we invent machines, if we invent processes or ideas that can reduce CO2 emission on a global scale, imagine we when invent an engine that consumes half of the fuel that we consume so far. And this is spread out all over the world. That has an impact. So let's focus on that that we can really do. Be what we have always been, Thomas, and I do not agree with you that Singapore is, we have always been thinkers, we have always been engineers, we have always been innovators. Let's focus on our strengths and do an impact on that. And of course, we have to be role model. At HR, we have the sustainability report since a couple of years, very detailed, very expensive, by the way, but we insist on doing that, to have a true picture of what we are doing, to, to be accountable for what we're doing. And I want to emphasize once again what Oscar said before, teaching needs to be involving students. And I can announce that here publicly, Thomas, we copied Hochschule is on Cohen, at ATA we will now introduce a one week all over ATA event where all students can participate like you guys did. We copied you here, I acknowledge that. And the topic is on sustainability, on food to be more precise this year. So let's include everybody, educate the brightest mind of the world to come up with ideas that can really have an impact on a global scale. And then, Swiss universities can lead such a global change. I'm also very optimistic because, you know, Switzerland likes to offer good services. This is a very strong tradition since the 19th century. So mental-wise, there is a good, you know, a good precondition uh, to do the next step. Second, you know, this is a country famous for quality and innovation. And if you're famous for quality and sustainability gets a new aspect of quality widespread in the world, you know, it's, it's easy and it's natural that the Swiss would want to achieve sustainability as a quality sign. So this is my second argument why I'm, why I'm very optimistic. Third argument is this is one of the least one of the most liberal societies, there aren't many liberal societies left over because most societies are highly regulated. Whereas here you have still the entrepreneurial spirit, you have subsidiarity in political systems, 
and you have the idea that one woman and one man can change something. So I think that's a very important third political aspect. Uh, and you know, and the fourth one is the cultural one that was already mentioned, that this, understand, uh, this society is towards understanding and consensus and not to produce conflicts. Also, we see some other aspects these days within political debate, but traditionally, this is a country towards consensus. And this uh, would like to include sustainability. And so I think a very good perspective to, be not, to become not only the country of chocolate, of watches, of banks, but also of sustainability. Thank you. I'd like to introduce a, or make an offer for an additional question I'd like to ask you. We've had, we've had before just the, the panel, uh, the, the audience that has challenged us with what they would expect from us. Um, now I turn it over to you. What would you expect of your collaborators in the university that would help you integrate sustainability and responsibility better? Because you mainly have some issues as well. I share mine. I, I, spend, uh, I talk to all the incoming students every year uh, when, they, when they join and I tell them that uh, when we went to Rio plus 20, we were on the Greenpeace activist boats and we asked them, if you would have to change business education, how would you go about it as activists? And they said, no problem at all. You've got activists in the classroom, use them. So um, I'm talking to my students and say, you are my activists, make sure you get the education that you want. Right, so that's my wish to my, uh, in, my, in, my, in my context. If you're, this is your, your free wish round, if you have wishes to, you imagine who is here, faculty, students, uh, program directors, what would be your wishes? But it's not really a wish, it's just a reality. You know, my, my, my vision is that we have, for this purpose, we really have to involve all the community of the university. And the students are very important, and the students are, we have a lot of them, you know, something like 75% of the community are students. And the students are very optimistic and are sure that they can have an impact. So we must believe that it can help us and we have to work with people who want to do something and not with people who don't want to do something. And I, I think this is already the case. But also we have to involve other people in the community, for instance, uh, technical and administrative staff. We can work with them. Many of them are interested in sustainability and responsibility. And I'm sure we have to, just to be optimistic. I don't like, you know, I've seen on a, on a slide sometimes this afternoon, it's too late. I don't know if it's too late. Maybe it's too late, I don't know. But I think this is not a good point of view. We have to do some steps. We have, and maybe instead of, of declaring some very ambitious objectives, just do some specific steps. And if many people make small steps, then we will really make a progress. I'm sure we can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Any wishes for you? I could make it easy and say travel less. <laughs> no, uh, uh, at, at the end I think uh, we, we, we realized that we need new methods of teaching uh, because uh, sustainability starts with a mindset. Uh, we all agree that we need more what we could call social entrepreneurship and uh, especially in the University of Social Science, uh, Economics, Law and Political Science, it, it starts with bringing people together. So my wish would be engage. Uh, faculty has to be present on the campus, has to meet students. Students have to come to courses, not only to collect credit points, but also because of they are interest, they are driven by their personal interest and at the end, we uh, need initiatives and at the University of St. Gallen we are in a lucky position that we get many initiatives from administrative staff, students, uh, faculty and sometimes it's very hard uh, not to be able to support all the uh, initiatives which are on the table. Uh, but my wish would be engaged. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be boring. I have exactly what you said in my mind. I mean, we have one ATL student. Is there another one here? Two. Two, okay. And so. a former one. Yeah, but oh, they, don't one. Count. they don't count. They don't count. <laughs> so we have two, two former ones. We have two ATL students here. ATL has some 
depends how you count, huh? <laughs> but, but at least 10,000 students, if you don't take into account the, 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 the PhD students. Where are they? So we need more, we are preaching it to the choir, somebody said on this panel here before. That's the, our problem. We need people who are not engaged to become engaged. And what I want from you guys who are sitting here is becoming multipliers. If every one of you engages two and these two engage two again and then two again, you know how exponential laws work. Within a couple of generations we have ATA on board and I hope then we also have all of Switzerland on board. I'm serious. Uh, it's easy to have a panel and talk a little bit about sustainability and all these big ideas, but at the end of the day we are not having an impact at all. Unless we succeed in engaging a large portion, not everybody, I agree with you Dominique, but a substantial portion of our people around us. So that's my wish. What a wonderful opportunity that a director can wish something. It doesn't happen very often. It doesn't right? happen very often. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's very easy. If you look at uh, uh, freshmen, uh, and when they enter universities the first day of fr uh, freshmen's week, they are, what, you know, this is one of the most strongest moments in a student life. They are highly motivated, they're all present, also there so are no credits and no grades. Uh, and they are just starting within groups, developing the, uni the university on, normally on a big idea if they're a good week is given and done. And then we experience only within very few weeks that energy goes down. So we have to question us, what are we doing that these young women and men are losing energy? And what could we do that they would continue on the same energy level, say, entering university? So my wish would be to continue the energy we are looking at, at freshmen, until PhD students would be great. Thank you. Well, we have 12 minutes until 5, and you know what that means, it's the day is over. So many of you have worked so hard to make this day happen. We're, not gonna, we're now going to spend the next 5 minutes to make sure that something remains after this day. So my commitment I make to you is I will collect all the ideas that will come up. We have 5 minutes, you have all papers with you because you are in academic institutions, so paper is part of who you are. So take a paper and write the commitment down that you can do. And I will share it, I will collect and I will find a way to share it. You've heard the wishes, you heard it. In, engage together by multiplying and keep keeping up the freshman energy. And this invitation of course is also to you, who you will have the last word in, in terms of sharing your commitment. So let's take five minutes for everybody. So, may I suggest if you have made a commitment, put your name on there. So I can, if you prefer your email address, so I can share this somehow with you and pass it out to, what should we say, to this side, so I can end up with all of, with all of your commitments. And now for the, night, for the last round, uh, perfectly in time, I'm asking directors for concrete, possible, feasible action at your own universities. In terms of, you know, given in this framework of sustainability and responsibility, what is it you can do? What are you taking away from today? And how can you share with us some concrete action? Of course, I would say my, my dream would be to really change the culture of the university. And it seems to be very difficult, maybe impossible, but I, re I remember 15 years ago, we had exactly the same question about quality system in a university. I'm convinced that quality system is really a way to improve teaching, education, research in university, and I can tell you after 15 years we were able to change the culture. So I'm sure we can do it, but it will take time and we have to work with everybody. And for that, probably my, my, my main intention would be, um, you know, if you, I'm convinced that if we want to, to, have, to do some progress, we need technology, but we also need social sciences and, and, and humanities. And we have to combine all these things together. And so we have to reinvent every day interdisciplinarity. It's very easy to say, we all promote interdisciplinarity, I'm sure, but nobody knows exactly how to do it. It's not just putting together courses from different topics or people from different topics. It's very to, to invent this. And I think this is the main goal I would like to have for my university. Thank you. Uh, my point is also linked to culture. 
in the previous panel it was mentioned that it's important to change the way of interaction at the university and uh, we embark on a rather important project of uh, teaching innovation and uh, what we committed is to support uh, projects, innovation projects uh, of professors uh, which will lead to more collaborative forms of, of uh, teaching. When I say this, I have to admit that already the term teaching is wrong. We should rather uh, call it innovations in learning, because teaching still is a little bit the old way of uh, 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 conveying uh, a knowledge. So let's call it uh, innovations in learning. Thank you. I'm sure uh, I'll note that for you too. Um, since, since I'm in the middle here, if anybody would, like, would anybody like to share any great commitment they have made, just to further inspire what we have here? Oh, oh I'm very hesitant. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Good. Okay. My commitment is that I will coach students to become more powerful in their university. Whatever I can do. So, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you. Uh, other commitments? Come on, you've had nothing. Thomas, thanks for saving me. Uh, I'm going to engage a lot more of my faculty colleagues uh, and get their commitment to integrate responsibility and sustainability into their teachings because I guess that is an individual and a personal thing. Uh, where it helps if the rector supports it, but basically you have to win over every single of the colleagues. Here, here. Okay. Enough inspiration to continue? I'll try to do my best to maintain and create the conditions so that such a debate of people who are willing to act on sustainability can do so. You know, I will continue change, so this means hiring four professors in sustainability this year, introducing a new major in business administration and entrepreneurship starting this fall, uh, starting a master's program with Arizona State University on sustainability science, developing a PhD program out of our new program of leverage point in sustainability, uh, starting the uh, you know, masters for professionals on human rights issues together with Christine Schwan and the Volkswagen Foundation and so on and so on. <laughs> you are just an innovation machine. Right? Fantastic. Well, I'm summarizing. Dominique has talking, talked about his dream to change the culture of the university, taking into account how long this can take, but also knowing that it can happen, um, with a particular focus on promoting the interdisciplinary aspects and challenges of, of there. Thomas Speaker has talked about supporting teaching innovation through his commitment to support innovative projects that lead to a more collaborative approach in learning. Lino has uh, mentioned that he will, he commits to creating and maintaining a condition for people who are engaged in responsibility and sustainability to actually do so. I don't know whether I wrote it down quick enough. And Sasha, I couldn't even repeat, you are just an innovation machine of new educational programs that are coming out of Lüneburg and that are to keep on impressing us. So with this, what I would like to do is say thank you. Thank you to everybody here. Thank you to my, dean, my esteemed colleagues. We are slightly ahead of time, really in the Swiss way. With that, I would like to get back, get hand back over to the program director, Thomas, to the program direction. Thank you. Okay.